Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar with us. And also to tonight, we have special guests. This is from our partner too in Canada, from Mr. Irvan, who will introduce me to the representative of Conestoga College. All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Martini. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Irvan. We're a partner from um, EOS, and also we are here tonight uh, and have um, Conestoga representative, um, Pam. How are you, Pam? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Hi, so, how are you? <laughs> so, Pam, Martini is going to be the host tonight for tonight. So, um, without further ado, um, please, Miss Martini, take it away. Okay, thank you, Mr. Irfan. Okay, everyone, as uh, I have mentioned before, here we have a uh, representative from Conestoga College, and she will introduce about the college to you, all about it. Okay, so later, if you have any questions, please drop any questions in the chat box, or you can raise your hands, and later in the session of question and answer, you can just ask directly, or you can just, yeah, drop any questions in the chat box okay later i will read it for you too okay then now i will uh ask miss fam to uh, give the explanation about the college here we go thank you thank you um thank you everyone um thank you thanks um to all of you for inviting me to the webinar today and um, thank you to the audience um, for coming to the webinar today I hope that um, from me as a perspective of um, college um, of Conestoga, Conestoga College, and also a person who was once a an international student, um, you know, I hope that I could share with you a lot of information, not only about the school, but you know, hopefully um, you can be inspired a bit, um, you know, after this webinar to make a decision, um, find the right school, find the right program for you. And um, yeah, um, stay on your journey. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. So within the scope of today, I'll quickly, um, you know, explaining a little bit about the school and also, um, you know, um, how you can work around our website. And of course, you know, with, um, uh, you know, the our partner today, um, they will be the counselors will will be a great source for you to advise you on your journey as well. Again, my name is Zoon. I am the Regional Recruitment Manager for Southeast Asia Region for Conestoga College. Um, I will start um, this presentation a little bit backward from what the slides um, is here. Um, so what are we? What is Conestoga College? Um, you know, we are a combination of a lot of different facts. Uh, but some of the facts that I would like to share with you today, we are actually the largest Canadian college in terms of international students, with 14, over 14,000 international students coming from over 80 countries. Um, over um, the total body of, at the moment, 27,000 students. Um, with um, you know over three hundred programs that are being offered to the whole intern um to the whole student body, in which um, over two hundred fourteen programs are offered um, to international students, we are very proud of um, you know all of our levels and in different ten different academic schools. So you can see here. And I'm not sure, you know, who are the audience today. Maybe a lot of you are mature students who look for postgraduate options, but a lot of you can be high school students. So um, for Conestoga, we are offering five different levels from um, one year um, college certificate, two year diploma, three year advanced diploma, bachelor degree, and postgrad certificate. Um, so to those who are high schoolers today, we are actually the largest college in Ontario, which is, um, I would say, the largest um, province in Canada in terms of economy and also education. Um, we are the largest college in terms of the number of bachelor degrees, in which around 
eight um, to nine options are in engineering programs. So needless to say, one of our prides are in engineering academic schools. Um, but besides that, to those who are mature students today, um, just for postgraduate certificate programs, um, we are offering over 70 uh, postgraduate programs in which um, around, I would say approximately 24 um, PG programs are two years long. And we have around 15 options that are called bundle options or um, dual offers. And you will learn about it um, later on in the next you know, few slides. The next stats I would like to share with you is our co-op program. So Canada is a destination, generally speaking, famous for co-op programs, for practical study and you know, real world learning. Um, so co-op programs basically is, you know, um, you work while you study and you get credits for it in the field that you are studying. And at Conestoga, we are offering over 70 co-op programs to international students. Um, bachelor degree programs, all 16 of those, uh, will include 16 months of co-op programs. So it's actually a great way for you um, to get a degree, um, you know, that is very practical and that is very, um, you know, hands-on learning. The last stats about Conestoga is the 88% 80, uh, of graduate employment rate. Um, this is a little bit outdated because it's 17, 18 um, school year statistics. Uh, however, uh, up until now, the um, graduate employment rate um, for the last three years, I would say, remains around 85%, which is also, you know, really high, considering two of those years are, you know, COVID years. So that is um, a little bit about um, what is Conestoga in a nutshell. Um, going further down, about Conestoga College. So we are a combination of 10 different academic schools. So you can see here, applied computer science, IT, engineering and technology are probably the most, the top two academic schools that um, is the reason why students or international students choose to go to Conestoga. Um, we have a very prestigious applied computer science and engineering technology um, programs. And as a matter of fact, we have a lot of alumni who are, um, you know, successful, um, business, you know, engineers, businessmen in engineering industry, um, located not only in the region where Conestoga is, but also in other regions like the Silicon Valley in California. Another very big business um, academic school of Conestoga is business um, academic school. Um, I would say um, probably these um, are the, this is the academic school that hold the most um, international students right now. And I will share with you the reason why. Um, community services, if you are interested in early childhood um, education, this is the school that you should go for. Creative industries like animation, graphic design, health life science, um, of course, um, you know, uh, like nursing programs, healthcare programs, hospitality, culinary arts, trade and apprenticeship, um, which is high skill, um, you know, um, labors. So all of our, um, these are all of our um, academic schools. The last academic school that we didn't put it on the slide right here is the workforce development. And I feel such a pity that we didn't put it on the slide right here because to me, um, it's a very critical um, academic school. The reason why is because of our approach to create new programs and a you know, our teaching approach. So our world right now is ever changing. Um, you know, you can see that there are a lot more new skill set has been created for the past few years. And who knows next year, what kind of skill set uh, we will need in order to, to match um, the labor, the, the labor, the workforce. So um, the um, workforce development and academic schools, 
kind of cover the, the other nine academic schools and they will see in the real world what kind of specific skill set that will need, uh, that will be needed in future. And they will create that program and, you know, put that program um, onto the list so we can create, you know, kind of future labors, um, future employees, future talents for those skill set that we project. That will be the skill set that will be needed for the future. So um, that is a very criti critical, that is a very unique point about Conestoga among all of the schools in Canada, while you know most of those are very conservative. So going back here, why you should choose um, Conestoga as your home away from home. So this is where my experience comes in handy for you and to share with you. Uh, when I was an international student, I would say, you know, um, there are a lot of schools, you know, that will match your, your admission requirement. There will be a lot of schools that will match your budget. And there will be a lot of schools that are very high ranking. But what is a school that is for you? You know, um, so that is where you need to really, um, you know, look um, directly and bold into what you really have and what you really fit into. And do not try too hard to, you know, um, find a place that you think you like, but doesn't fit you. Um, and within all of those reasons, um, one of the biggest reasons why you should choose a school is the setting itself, so the surrounding of the school, so the region of the school, the living condition, whether it will suit your personality. If you are a very robust, you know, person, you have high, you know, strong dynamic, um, you know, a bigger city will be um, a fit for you, for example, but you are a very laid back, chill, introvert maybe a smaller area um, that is very out there in the nature will suit you, who knows, right? And about Conestoga. So Conestoga um, has six campuses right now for international students. And all six campuses are strategically located in a region called the Waterloo region. Um, you can see on our right hand side right here is the map of, you know, a Waterloo region in the setting of Ontario province. So Waterloo region consists of four cities, the twin cities of Waterloo and Kitchener, um, make it one point, Guelph and Cambridge, and these are the whole Waterloo region. Proximity wise, um, it is about an hour of driving away from Toronto, about an hour um, away from Nag. Gara Falls, um, you know, some other um, famous um, location in Ontario, like London, Ontario. It's an hour away from London. It's an hour, it's about two hours away from Windsor. And interesting fact, USA, there is um, Detroit, uh, Michigan, which is the automation capital of the world, where Ford or um, I would say General Moto has the uh, headquarter in it. Uh, we are around um, two hours and a half away from Detroit, Toronto, um, Detroit, Michigan. And why did I why did I mention that that fact? You know, because of the proximity to all the key locations and you know um, other locations in Ontario and in the world, uh, we are actually the whole Waterloo region itself is one of the strategic. Um, labor or talent suppliers to all of those, um, you know, cities, even to Toronto or Detroit, Michigan. A lot of our um, alumni who, um, you know, went to Conestoga before, and they commute to work. So they live in Waterloo region, but they work in Toronto or in Detroit and going back and forth um, every day. So that is, you know, some stats for you to kind of imagine geographically speaking, where we are. Um, the next fact that I want to share with you is uh, within the Waterloo region. So Waterloo region um, goes by so many names. Um, it has the name of um, the triangle, the technology triangle of Canada is the Silicon Valley of Canada or second Silicon Valley of the world. Why so? Um, you know, the Waterloo region itself, we are one of the most 
um, if not the fastest growing um, startup ecosystem of the whole Canada. Um, and second um, fastest um, in North America, just behind the Silicon Valley um, in California, within just Kitchener downtown, um, there are about 5,000 um, startups, technology startups that call Kitchener home. Um, so you can see that, you know, the Waterloo region itself, it needs, um, you know, it needs a lot of talents in technology, in engineering, in order to um, grow that region themselves. And what does that also mean? Um, that also means, um, you know, that besides the technology talents, the um, engineering talents, um, they not going to the region by themselves. They're going to come there with uh, the family. Um, they're going to create their families there. So a lot of other services, human services, like entertainment, um, hospitality, um, you know, hospitals, healthcare, education will need to grow in this region itself. And, you know, talking about startup, every startup need a business backbone. So you can see that, you know, even if this is a very technology um, manufacturing, um, engineering um, heavy area, but it also grows really fast in other industries too, because of, you know, the way how people move and live in this area. Um, one of them, I guess, the last um, point that I want to bring out about Waterloo region here on this slide, you can see is the family income, the average family in income for Waterloo region, slightly higher than the Canadian average, while um, the cost is around 20% less than Toronto. So you can see that you can earn more, but you can also save more here. That is, you know, some fact about the Waterloo region. Um, this slide right here is a little bit outdated for the number 1500, but there's something else that I would like to share with you here. Um, you can see a few big names here, like Intel, Google, SAP, or BlackBerry. These are a few of, you know, many big brands in the world that have the headquarters in Canada in Waterloo region. And fun fact, um, BlackBerry is actually a product of Waterloo Region, founded by one of um, University of Waterloo's alumnus. Um, so um, in a nutshell, I would say that, um, you know, um, that is to me one of the reasons, one of the key reasons why you should choose um, Conestoga, because it's a very promising, you know, area for you to live, for you to create a family there and for you to you know, find a job afterward. Um, you can see here some of the stats that was big volume. So in the next two years until um, the end of 23, we are expecting to have, um, or we are in need of 22,000 more tech workers or tech talents for the Waterloo region itself. And by 2030, um, we will need around uh, 50,000 um, tech workers uh, more for the region. Um, some of the other stats here, um, you'll see how high quality of our talents are for the Waterloo region. So, um, you know, that is about why you should choose Conestoga. Let me go further down um, so you can feel more related um, to the school. So for high schoolers that are here today or parents of high schoolers that are here today, Here's the list of all of our bachelor programs that are offered in Conestoga. Tomorrow, I'm actually having a, an event here in Vietnam. Um, and one of our guest speakers um, are, is uh, an alumnus from Vietnam. Uh, he initially, he wanted to apply to University of Waterloo, which is, you know, of course, the top ranking for bachelor degree in technology. But, um, you know, while uh, what University of Waterloo is really hard to get into, first of all, and the tuition fee is really high. A lot of those are above 60,000, 60 grand a year. Uh, but for Conestoga College, our um, tuition fee, our base tuition fee um, for bachelor degree is 15,200. Um, added, you know, adding, um, you know, 
uh, book fees, book supplies, etc., uh, can add another three thousand. Still very affordable to the neighbor. Um, so it's a really good option for you to consider. Consider if you want to study Bachelor of Engineering or Computer Science in the Waterloo region. For postgrad um, students today, so I will show you later on how to search for the two years um, postgraduate program at Conestoga. But for now, I'm going to show you the list of dual offers. So, what is dual offers? To give you a background, so Canada itself um, is a destination for a lot of um, international students to immigrate. Um, and if um, you know you have a minimum length of study of two years or above, you'll be eligible to apply for a three-year postgraduate work permit, meaning you'll have more time to look for an opportunity um, to advance your skills and to explore, to have you know kind of feel the vibe of working in Canada before you go home um, and the dual offer will serve you that purpose so most postgraduate certificates will be one year long um, so that's why we create a dual offer for you to have a length of study of two years number one and number two to really kind of give you a deep knowledge in a new skill set so you can see here um, the, on the gray column they are the programs that are offered in January in tech. So this is the first page and this is the second page. And if um, you know you choose one of the options on the gray column here, so for example, process quality engineering, you have one of the, you know, you have three options to choose for the next program that you will study um, starting in September 23. So either you can choose quality assurance to be the second offer that you will study or fintech or project management so these are how the um, it, that is the structure of how this is presented to you now you can see here uh we have um probably around two i would say two and a half um combos uh, for engineering programs the next um three and a half combos for um hospitality and business related in the um, programs. And the rest of those um, seven options in applied computer science um, uh, for you to, to explore. So um, this um, is for January Intake. For September Intake, when we open you know, the window for application, you will see um, the, the list, the full list for dual offer for September. And um, yeah, you can you can apply from the start of the uh, when you start applying for the school. So um, before I go on with the um, with the website, I want to share with you a little bit of our support student support. So um, of course, I, I would say that one of the biggest um, you know support from the school to international students is the international student transition coordinator. And you can imagine, you know, when you first landed in Canada, there's so much that you do not know, you know, even the language barrier, what to do, first step, second step, third step. If you go to the wrong class, right? There can be so many problems that you can bump into when you first um, land in Canada. And this team, they will be the ones um, who help you through those first days. They'll give you information when you need it. Um, they will stay in their booth on the campus. So you can always go to campus, um, ask them questions in order to have a better transition to Canada. And for me, as I am working for the school um, international office, one of my, really one of my dreams is to build a group of Indonesian students um, at Conestoga so you can have a network that will mentor you, you know, throughout the whole career at Conestoga. And more importantly, um, post-graduation, you will have a network that can refer you to, you know, a good job in Canada afterward for you to explore your career choices. So hopefully um, one of you here today it was, you know, one day will be actually working closely with me to build that Indonesian student network at Conestoga. Um, so that will conclude my slides. 
um, I, I would like to share with you a bit about you know how to explore our website and you will see that there are quite a few information that you know might spark your interest or might be one of your questions later on. So here is our international uh, landing page. So when you go to conestogac.on.ca, you see on the left hand side, there's a tab called international. You click on it and it will you know um, lead you into this landing page. Um, so on this landing page, you will see um, that you know there are um, different uh, requirements. So admission requirements uh, for international students, aka the ALS, um, application information. So the steps, and I'm sure that you know your counselor will do um, their best in order to lead you through that process. The fee and payments right here. So you see um, for fee and payment. 22-23 tuition fee schedule. So it will be broken down by level. Uh, for diploma level is 13,750. For postgraduate level, the tuition fee is 14,900. 14, and degree programs, AKA the bachelor program, um, it is 15,200. Um, and that's, um, you know, that's how you um, explore um, the information of the school. Um, the last information that I would like to share with you today is our list of full-time programs. So when you go to our um, website, um, you go to programs courses and you click on full-time right here and it will show you the landing page that I'm showing you right now. So we have, you know, these are all the, the, the programs. So because of these, um, you know, in order to narrow down your option, you will need to do a lot of filters on your right hand side. So you click on international students. Uh, maybe you can click on um, the areas of interest, which are the field that you would like to study. And these are kind of the 10 um, academic schools that we have. The program length. So let me show you an example. We will find um, the two-year PG certificate programs right here. Credential, you can choose um, graduate certificate right here and you apply filters. And here is the list of our two-year postgraduate certificate program. So to be exact, there are 23 uh, results for two-year PG programs and if you are interested in one specific um, option, for example, embedded system development, for example, you open the link and you will go to that landing page. You will see um, the in-text that are available for you to apply, um, the status of it. So a lot of these for January are already closed. Um, for May even, it's already waitlisting. Um, it's two year long right here. Um, some of the you know quick facts about the program, the program description. Um, you will know more than me if you are an engineer and you would like to further study. So you um, you can read the program description right here to know that um, you know what you will study um, when you are at Conestoga and what kind of jobs you can get after graduation. Um, and then tuition fees, um, things like that right here. So you can see for international students, base tuition 14,900, um, ancillary fees um, around 3,000 to add up to a total fee of um, 17,800. So um, here is the list um, and here's how you can um, play around with our website. And that um, is the conclusion of our of my presentation. And right now, I hope that I can get a lot of your um, questions. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Soon, for the nice presentation. Okay, yeah. how much is the first deposit? How much? Yes. Okay. That's a great question that I forgot to mention. Um, yeah. So um, there will be two cases. So um, if you, uh, oh, uh, my mistake, because 
Indonesian students, you're still going through the regular stream, right? Where you have to prove your finance. And in that case, um, the first deposit is 1500 Canadian dollars, uh, which is around 1200 um, US dollars for the first deposit. However, um, to make um, your chance of getting a visa approval higher, uh, I would recommend you paying the first tuition, um, the first semester tuition um, in order to show your commitment um, to the school. And in case, um, you know, the 1500 um, is the non-refundable deposit. Um, it's only refundable in case where you, um, uh, your visa application is disapproved. And in that case, um, we will refund you the deposit minus 200 um, administrative fee. So even if you pay, you know, the first um, semester tuition or just the 1500, um, in case if you fail your visa, you'll get everything back except for the 200 admin fee, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, that's so clear. And um, how, how long is the duration? I mean, after the deposit and then to the, you know, like the first term payment, is there any special time for that? They will send you an invoice. So usually, for example, if you if you apply really early on, right? For example, if you um if you apply for September twenty three, um in November twenty two, for example, and a lot of those do actually, uh, you once you get the LOA, you have around a month or a month and a half to make your first deposit, and usually around two to three months before the semester start. Um, you will pay the first semester tuition. Um, so that is the, the longest um, gap that you can have. Okay, I see. Right, about, and then about the partial scholarship. I mean, is there any special, like, you know, like a uh, cutoff, for example, like this in the second term based on, for example, based on the student's score or the GPA? Is there any? Uh huh. So scholarship wise, um, we do have a few scholarship uh, for international students. Um, and like you said, it's only for current students. Um, so, um, you know, you can't really apply for scholarship when you um, are a fresh uh, applicant and haven't, you know, uh, paid the deposit to school. Um, one of the most common um, international scholarship that we have is um, 1500 Canadian dollars um, for, and it's a one-time scholarship. It's also competitive um, basis. And I know that, you know, um, some of you might be bummed um, hearing that uh, because, you know, um, I know that a lot of the students in, in Indonesia um, can go to, you know, other countries like the U.S. And you already are very familiar with the scholarship system. And I myself was once a, a student studying in the U.S. too. So I really understand what you uh, have in mind, um, you know, conservatively, uh, conventionally. Uh, but um, it is really a different story for Canadian schools, uh, partly because you can see that the tuition fee is already very affordable comparing to other destinations. And uh, we do not want to kind of jeopardize our education quality. So generally speaking, most of Canadian schools, um, I would say most of public institutions, post-secondary institution in Canada, do not give out um, a huge chunk of scholarship. Yeah, uh, we know that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good. <laughs> Oh yeah, is there any on-campus work as uh, like part-time or students should, you know, like uh, go find the off-campus work for the part-time? Yeah, so um, is uh, actually a very good um, question too. We have a job board for on-campus job and we have another job board for off-campus jobs. So the Vietnamese student that um, is our guest speaker for tomorrow event that I just mentioned during my presentation, he, uh, when he was a student at Conestoga, he actually had three jobs. So he had two jobs on campus um, to work during um, the week. So he doesn't have to move a lot, right? He works for the library and for the computer lab. Um, and um, on weekends, um, he will work off campus at restaurants. 
and all of those um, on and off campus jobs um, are offered at the rate, uh, the minimum wage of $15 an hour. Uh, and that's the minimum wage of the province. And, you know, when you um, buy policy, so students, uh, why you study? So during the school year, you can work maximum of 20 hours in uh, a week. And during your summer break, for example, during your break, when you do not study, um, you will have a maximum of 40 hours of, of um, um, working on and off campus. And you can do the math. Um, if you do the max hours, um, you can make around a thousand Canadian dollars um, a month, and that will pretty much cover your living cost, I would say. Um, so whatever that you have to prepare, of course, I would still and always recommend that you um, should prepare a little bit more than you need to pay in order you know to kind of cover you in the worst case scenario when you are away from home but um you know when everything goes smoothly um the the uh, the jobs uh, what you make on the jobs on the part-time jobs will kind of cover all of your living cost all right uh is there any limitation i mean for the duration to work on campus for example uh, as we know that we are international students, we got um, 20 hours in a week uh, work off campus, right? Uh, what about the on campus? Is there any, you know, like certain duration, for example, only 10 hours or? I see. Something? Yeah. So so the, the 20 hours a week is the total hours that you can work part time. So online or offline, you know, you can do a certain hour amount of hours of each job but uh, like that student all three jobs will add up to 20 hours a week okay and what about uh for example like the cost of living in in that area and also but the housing do you over mm -hmm. i mean yes then housing for the international students and how much does it cost sure so um in um in terms of the cost of living um the 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 cost of living overall for the whole year um is about 10,000 Canadian um dollars a year um and um i will say that in terms of housing so the monthly cost of it um is an average of around 600 um Canadian dollars a month so it can you know it can it can be a little bit lower it can be a little bit higher uh it can be varied right and food wise it's around uh, 150 to 300 uh, Canadian dollars a month um, transit um, depending on the kind of transit but it's around 80 um, Canadian dollars a, a, a month phone and internet um, personal items so everything will add up around 800 to a thousand uh, a month all right we go to the next questions Mm -hmm. Which one is the main campus and what is the most popular program at Conestoga College for international students besides ID? Uh -huh. Okay, so which one is the main campus? Um, I believe that we do not have that, you know, one, that concept of a one main campus. Uh, we kind of, um, so each campus will cover a few different academic schools. Um, for example, Kitchener Dune uh, is um, in terms of size, is our biggest campus uh, because it consists of um, technology and um, engineering and some engineering programs. And of course, you know, a lot of students coming to um, Conestoga for technology and, um, and engineering. So that's why Kitchener Dune is one of our biggest campuses. Uh, Waterloo is another very big campus because it also has some, you know, technology, IT, engineering, business. Uh, programs. Right now, we are trying to actually kind of diverse. So um, right now, you can't really find, um, you know, a certain program in all the campuses. But what that's what we are trying for in the next few years, where you will have, you know, um, you can find any program or most of your programs that you like, uh, the common programs in more than two or three campuses. 
at Conestoga. So we want to um, create an environment where, you know, because the whole Waterloo region, um, each city will be around 20 to 30 minutes away from each other. So they they want to live near the campus. They want they can have some friends um, that live near that campus. And we want to build a life that is very close to the campus that they study at. So there is not really a, a biggest campus or the main campus in terms of, of activities. They will hold the same activities, but for different kinds of programs, if that makes sense. Um, what is the most popular program at Kunistoga for international students beside IT? So I would say that um, um, for Southeast Asia region, um, Southeast Asia students, business school is a huge school for Southeast Asia students. Um, another one is a healthcare um, academic school. For Filipino um, students, for example, um, healthcare or health academic school is um, life science is um, their biggest um, destination for in terms of programs. Um, technology, and uh, here's why um, I would say that, you know, even technology, engineering, uh, our, I would say our most pres prestigious uh, programs at Conestoga, but they are not the biggest because of the um, size of our labs, right? Uh, because they have to have certain um, special kinds of devices that they use during the school year when you study. And so we can't, even if we want to, we can't hold more than um, the slots for the labs. So that's why seats go by like this. And a lot of programs actually, um, we are full after like 30 minutes of opening the application window. So you can see how fast the slots go by for business um, students. You know, we do not have a lot of time in, in labs, right? We have similar and we go out and to do co-ops. So that's why um, usually if a student really serious about Conestoga, I can ask our admission team um, for an extra slot for that student. And I have a higher chance of getting a slot for a business student than an engineering or technology um, student, if that makes sense. So that's why, you know, in terms of size, business is huge. And I would say business is huge anywhere because it's very interchangeable. Um, every industry will need business. So everyone will, you know, you get you, you get students from every other industries too to go study business. All so right. that's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then uh what about the schedule of you know the study? I mean for the duration of you know like the class schedule, is there every day or you know like how many hours per day like that? Sure. So in terms of the class schedule, it depends on uh, which um, which class you sign up at the beginning of a semester. And this is um, a reminder for you if you have applied to Kinestoga or will apply to Kinestoga, um, you will need to explore the, the class schedule and register you know, as soon as possible because class can, can be full too. And um, sometimes you, you know, I've seen students who who can't um, have who can't be full time students because they um, they sign up really late regardless of um, you know the reminders of the school. So, but anyway, generally speaking, um, I see most of the time. Generally speaking, class will run every day, and you will have around two or three classes a day. Um, you will have around six or seven, sometimes eight. Um, subjects in a semester that you have to finish. All right. And how many intakes are there in a year? Yeah. So generally speaking, uh, speaking again, um, there are three intakes. Uh, one is in the fall. So bachelor programs usually start in August. Um, the other levels will start in September. Um, then the next one is January. Then the last one, the smallest one is May intake or summer intake. Uh, but, you know, it, it will depend on the programs that you want to apply for. Some of those, like the bachelor programs, will be offered every fall. Um, and it doesn't have the January or May intake. So when you apply for that program, you really have to um, do a research online um, on our website to see 
uh, which intakes are available and the status of those intakes. All right, we go to the next questions. Is it about, oh, how about class program for hospital hospitality management? Is there only a couple of days or every day? Uh -huh. So hospitality management um, is a program. So we are offering a couple of uh, programs for hospitality management and same as the other uh, programs. Um, you know, it will, number one, it will depend of how many classes you can sign up um, before a semester starts. But generally speaking, it will be around, you know, it might be around four, three, four hours of studying every day. And as you mentioned about the diversity, Maybe you can tell us or share to us about, you know, like where do the most students come from? Sure. Um, so um, most of the students come from India um, in the international student sector. And I would say that you can find um, Indian students almost, uh, you know, is the biggest body of international students everywhere. Uh, and it's more so in technology and engineering schools because, you know, of course, India is the biggest hub of technology in the world. Um, so that is the reason why we have so many um, Indian students for technology and engineering um, um, programs. And this is a side note since um, we're talking about Indian school, uh, Indian students, they, um, they really know how... Um, they they've always been the biggest source of international students um, everywhere. So usually the case is that they really they apply really early on, like they will wait for when the um, portal opens, um, and they will apply right away. And that's why the seats goes by really quickly sometimes, um, not all the time, but you know for some really hot programs. So if um, you also would like to apply for a you know highly demanded program, you know, especially in engineering or technology, um, you should also do the same thing. So um, decide really quickly, apply really early on so you can have, uh, you know, the seats um, for yourself because we are the first come first serve basis. Um, Southeast Asian students um, speaking, Filipino students are our biggest um, student body right now. At Conestoga, we have a group of probably 200 to 300 um, Filipino students at um, Conestoga. Then we have Vietnamese students of around 100, 150 Vietnamese students at the school. And uh, we really would like to have uh, more Indonesian students. Uh, right now at Conestoga, probably we have a group of about um, 20, 30 um, Indonesian students at Conestoga. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any semester break if we take two year program? Um, you will not have a semester break. So it will be um, a 16 months long. Um, and uh, yeah, so it will be fast in terms of, you know, you'll save more cost in terms of living cost, I would say. Is there any facilities over for students, gym or? anything yes um so facility we have a recreational center um at every campus so students can always you know go there for activities for gyms um for extra classes like sport classes and stuff um we are also i believe um associated with a few you know local um facilities um that you know you can use at a discounted rate or even a free rate um, and then, of course, you know, um, facilities, infrastructures like libraries are probably one of the requirements of our school, too. So, yeah, we do. Okay. What about uh, community? I mean, from the college community, is there any special community or do you have? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, um, since you brought that on, um, the Waterloo region itself is actually the second most festive regions in the world behind Berlin um, with, um, in terms of, I mean, in terms of the beer festival, the Oktoberfest. Um, so we have a, also a really, I would say a huge Oktoberfest at Waterloo region. Um, and um, yeah, um, we pretty much have festival every month 
I would say. So community-wise, um, you will find it a very robust community. Um, we have everything. So imagine this, uh, you go down to downtown of Waterloo um, and or Kitchener. Of course, you know, um, bars and pubs and, you know, uh, restaurants are a requirement there, boutique shops, you know, um, clothes and all, all sorts of, of stuff that you can find that are pretty standard for a city. But, you know, I, I'm not sure if Indonesia is a big country for um for bubble tea for example but in waterloo region i probably found about three or four um brands that are you know of bubble teas that are in vietnam it's really i really find it local uh personally so um you know since it, during my presentation there's a stat that we say that you know 30 percent of the population of waterloo region is is international so you pretty much you can find anything uh, we have a vietnamese market uh, we have a F filipino market and restaurant wise of course we have all sort of you know uh, cuisines kitsch um, you know korean vietnamese of course um, all sort indian so um yeah you can pretty much find anything that you like um there um, so to, to give you a better transition to the life there, I guess. <laughs> nice then, okay. Uh, what company partner with your college? I mean, for example, um, uh, for the after, you know, after graduate. Sure. So um, in, the, in the back of my mind, I do not have a list of companies I, I remember, and it would, um, it would, you know, it would depend on each semester too. So I have mentioned the co-op options, right? Uh, co-op, um, it will depend every semester how many slots um, that the department can get for students um, during that semester. Uh, co-op, um, you know, you will see a lot of programs that are called co-ops. And a lot of programs are called uh, co-op optional. And what are the differences between those two? So co-op programs mean when you study in that specific program, you'll be guaranteed to have a time for your co-op uh, co time. But co-op optional, uh, it means that not every single student in that specific program will have a time of taking co-op. It will depend on your grades of the first semester that you study um, in that program. So you do really have to perform well in order to be considered to um, get a co-op. And um, when you are qualified for a co-op, we do not give you the co-op itself automatically. You do have to um, apply for it like an intern an in internship or you know a real job right so you have to write your own resume you have to do the cover letter you have to do interviews what we will do um to help you and to support you in that is that we will you know try we'll help you fix your resume we'll help you fix your cover letter we'll help you with the mock interviews and we'll prep you the best that you have but it's still your show right you still have to perform um to be chosen for that co-op you can find your own co-op, yes, um, outside of what we are offering um, each, each um, semester. Um, so um, that is a co-op part. For the job part, every year we'll have a, uh, a job fair. That is a huge job fair and, and local people, students from other schools will come to our job fairs. And um, there can be, a you know, we do not have a specific uh, relationship where we say, Okay, if students from graduate from Conestoga will automatically, you know, uh, work for this company. No, we do not have that. But um, you know, we have a very high rate of students going to bigger companies like Blackberries, um, of course, um, Apply Board, um, and then um, you know, Google, and then a bunch of those startups um, that are uh, you know available within the region, and then. Um, they can go out to Toronto and Detroit to work too. So in a nutshell, I would say um, in terms of partner um, partnership, there is no long-term partnership and there is no guarantee. It's still up to your 
um, you know, performance uh, during your study and your how you network with your teachers and professors. But I would say that, uh, you know, all of those company will come to our college to recruit our students. And that is already a very um, a bonus to our students to be proved or to be proven that, you know, they are qualified to, to be considered uh, for those partners. That's interesting. It means that, you know, like the other companies, uh, they, you know, like uh, consider a graduate students from your college, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's usually that way. Um, so there is no guarantee for any school, generally speaking. Um, if there is a specific um, like partnership that, you know, that guarantee a, um, a job opportunity, I must say it has to do some, some it has some, something to do with, you know, the ownership. Maybe a, um, a professor at the school will own that company in order to be able to make that kind of commitment. Yeah. Yeah. But as you mentioned before, that the students can ask, you know, like guidance from the student care and help, for example, to make mm -hmm. their resume good, to create cover letter yeah. or maybe any tips or trick about doing the interviews, right? That is there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, for the co-op programs, uh, optional one, is there any special requirements, I mean, for students to get um, the co-op? the chance for example like you said that uh, not all students can get that a uh, chance is there any special for example like um they should have a certain gpa or you know like how 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 about the um evaluation for that yep so um for the co-op programs it will depend on the uh, on the program also and it will depend on the um on the pool of students so for example they will take top I'd say 10%, for example, um, for co-op programs. So that means, you know, if that semester, um, top 10% means, you know, you have to have a GPA of minimum of 3.5, for example, then you have to have at least a 3.5. It's, it's, really, it's really relative in a way. So it's hard to say that there is a, you know, like a, um, a, ba a barrier that you have to do every semester is, is not uh, firm like that. So I would say that um, you should do the most that you can, um, and you should network with the um, with the um, professors too, because I've been stay I've been saying to to um, my students, um, a lot of those you know some of them will say you know oh it's not easy to get that co op and I say yes of course it's not easy, because you know it's a it's a lifetime chance you know not a lot of schools will offer you a co op, and will give you time to actually work, get paid, and get credits for studying. So of course you will have to, um, you know, work hard for it. But even if you do not get that co-op opportunity, if you're not qualified for that co-op opportunity, it's not the end of the world because, uh, you know, you can always network and keep a good relationship with um, your professors in order to um, get an internship. And, you know, internship, of course, sometimes, most of the time, I would say, that is non-paid, um, is unpaid internships, but it will give you a lot of intangible values, like um, your working experience, and it will give you, a, you know, a much higher chance of getting a job post-graduation. So um, I would say that, you know, um, I, I, I can't say concretely, on uh, on 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 um you know certain things but i will say that you know regardless you know you you try your best and if you do not get that co-op you continue working for an internship or something um that will get you further in the long run yeah uh i agree with that because a uh, connection is very important networking mm -hmm. also <laughs> okay and as you mentioned before, uh, for the internship that is unpaid, what about the co-op program? Is there paid or unpaid? It's paid. Um, and um, sometimes it's paid with minimum wage. Sometimes it's, um, it's paid higher than that. Uh, but it's, um, it's a paid um, program. And that's why a lot of students, you know, all the students, of course, love it. Um, and that's why it's worth fighting for. <laughs> so, And a lot that's of, um, side note, a lot of students who have worked um, during that co-op actually is um, is kept for the full-time um, job. 
So if they perform well, um, they do not even have to worry about applying for a job um, after graduation. Sure. Uh, and then what about Duolingo? Do, do you still uh, accept Duolingo? Yep, um, at the moment we still do. Um, and for post-grad programs, the Duolingo um, is 115. Yeah, 115 for PG programs. Okay. It's also mentioned on the international landing page um, for your reference. Sorry. If possible, can you show us where is Waterloo region in the map? Okay, let me sh let me pull out the Ontario map quickly. I'll see. I'll see how I can do this. Ontario. Okay. So you see here is the map of well, Ontario, first of all, is a huge province. Um, so you see here, Toronto here, and then Toronto is the metropolitan area. And then you go a little bit further, it's called the Greater Toronto Area that consists of Mississauga, Brampton, uh, yeah, those. And then you see Guelph, Kitchener, and then um, you see Hamilton down here, Niagara Falls, London, and then you see Detroit right here, right? So a lot of those commute, and then Buffalo in the US. So, um, yep. You can see, you can see the whole um, map of Ontario. Ontario is huge like this, right? Ottawa is way up here. Canada is a huge country. So within just one province, it might take you 10 hours to drive. But so you can, so that to, with that being said, you can even see how close the whole regional, the, the whole Waterloo region um, in terms of proximity to um, bigger region. And you will see that this part is a lot more, um, it has a higher dynamic um, than the upper part. You can see, um, you know, how, how dense it is comparing to the Northern part of Ontario. Yeah, thank you then for showing us. Okay. Uh, next question, is there an age limit to study in Conestoga? Can we get working permit for suppose? Okay, so um, Conestoga, um, specifically speaking, we do not have an age limit. Um, as long as you can get a slot and you can, um, you, you're you qualified um, academically, um, you will get an LOA. But what's more important is how you can get to Canada uh, which is your visa part. And sometimes, and that is, you know, um, EOS um, job to counsel and to advise. And they have a better idea than me, honestly speaking. I do not have a lot of knowledge in, in the visa part um, to get you there. So yeah, Martini, maybe it's your question <laughs> more than mine. Uh, do you have any, I mean, uh, students, I mean, the oldest one, maybe you can share it to us. Yeah. Um, I have a Vietnamese student who mm -hmm. was born in, um, in 79, 1979 that entered this year. Um, and I, I don't know if I have an older student than that, but so far that mm -hmm. I know, and I have interacted with, he's the oldest one, uh, with kids, with wives too, uh, wife, sorry, not <laughs> wives, but... <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I think that there is no boundaries for, you know, like for studying in Canada, as, as I no. uh, uh, often mentioned before. <laughs> because, you know, usually it's uh, kind of different with Indonesia. You know, that Indonesia have, you know, like limitation in age, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, for for working permit for sports, yes, yeah, sure, you can get because this is public college. Uh, let me end, let, let me answer for you then. And then next, mm -hmm. what if Kanestaka does not offer the bundling program one plus one that we want to apply to? Can we request the bundling program we want? Ah, um, the, so far, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah go, ahead. One, go ahead. You know, like certificate for one year and then the next year they will continue other programs, you know, like also one plus one like that, you know, that case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so far, we do not have the option that you can build your own bundle programs yet. Um, but um, I hope that they are building more options for you. So when you apply, you can find the options that you want. So it's based on our case. I mean, it's, uh, you know, like, uh, for example, we, we want the first year to take this program. And after that, uh, it's also our, you know, like our choice, our own choice like that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that, that we, we do not have that option yet. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so it's just free uh, to the students whether they will choose um, their own program like that. Mm -hmm. As you as because you don't have specific one, so they can just just, you know, like, as they wish, for example, like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course. Okay, and then uh, how long, I mean, does your school, you know, like issue the letter of acceptance? I mean, yeah, the process. Thank you, because um, I forgot to brag about that. Uh, um, our processing time is um, two weeks long as a commitment and comparing to um, Canadian schools is really our pride and we really take that pride to another level. So if you, do not have a um, an offer letter within the two weeks. Um, please, you know, contact me, and um, and um, I'll get you the offer letter. Maybe uh, Zin, can you maybe yeah? Any tips or trick for international students? Sure. In terms of tips uh, for application, I would say that uh, regardless of the school in Canada that you apply for, um, even it's Conestoga or it's not Conestoga. Uh, I would recommend you apply really early on. Um, plan it way ahead because, um, you know, number one, seats go out really quickly. And number two, um, you know, it can take some time to get the visa approval. Um, so, um, you know, give it time um, to process the whole um, application in case if, you know, anything goes wrong uh, from your plan, you have time to actually fix it and, and resubmit or, you know, things like that. So you can go to school on time. Um, that's the first thing. And I guess my, um, you know, all the informations are online um, and, you know, um, you have the support from everyone, I would say from EOS, from all the partners that are here today uh, from the school from the point where you decided that you want to go study abroad and then, you know, you choose a destination, what kind of service you need, um, you know, to where, when you go to school and you, um, you find everything so strange in the first month, you have all that um, kind of support. And we are here to support you, you know, with information, but also with uh, a, a mental support. But it, you know, overall, and at the end of the day, it's still your show. So um, you still are the ultimate part of your show and you're still the show owner, you're still the performer. So I hope that, you know, whatever comes to your plan, you know, whatever that you might find it um, a breeze or if it's a hard thing to, to, to overcome, um, you know, you really know what you uh, want to do. You um, set on your path and, you know, you just enjoy the journey, you know, whether it, whatever, you know, disregard of whatever that will bring, that will be brought to you and um, create your own successful story. And I really hope that in, you know, maybe next year or in a few years, um, in one of the webinars like this today, I can bring one of you that um, attended the webinar today and say that, you know, here's one of our very successful showcase from Indonesia. And we want to that person to share um, your or his or her successful story to inspire others. So I guess that's all. Um, it will not be, um, you know, a really easy road. Um, I will, I'll be honest with you, but you got all the support here and, you know, do your best, enjoy, enjoy your journey. Thank you. That's a, such a nice, you know, like, <laughs> Speaking then, okay, uh, really appreciate, yeah, just like what Michael said, okay. Okay, Thank I you, guess if there, is no, yeah, if there is no more questions, 
just uh, we can close this webinar and then uh, you can just ask for further questions to me later you can just uh you know like give um ask me for dm me and then anything about conestoga college and about your program don't forget to just contact me and thank you very much for zoom for the time thank you and also for Ivan, thank you very much for rina also thank you very much and for anybody joining this webinar tonight thank you very much and i'll see you in the next event okay bye bye thank you Zoom. bye have a great night thank, thank you, you. thanks everyone yeah thank you